You are welcome to the GMAT 41's YouTube channel. We've got some questions you're going to solve. And the question is tied into our previous class on Hood's Law of Elasticity. The question here reads, a 50.0 kilogram is dropped on a spring from a point 10 meter above the spring. If the force constant of the spring is 4.0 times 10 to the power of 4, Newton per meter, find the maximum compression of the spring. G equals 10 meter per square second. To handle this problem, we need to know the parameters given to us in the question. Now we are told that a mass of 50.0 kilogram is dropped on a spring. Now, that mass was dropped on the spring from a height 10 meter above the spring. So, one can think of something like this. Let me just do a little sketch. Let's assume that this is the spring. Let's say that this is the spring. Okay? And then there is a mass dropped from a given height. Let's say this is the mass M. The height from this to the spring is given as 10 meter. You know, when this mass falls on this spring, it's going to compress the spring. So that's just the idea here. And then the examiner asked us to find the maximum compression of the spring, given that the force constant is 4.0 times 10 to the power of 4 Newton meter. Now, looking at this, if this mass falls on this spring, remember the mass is being released from a certain height. If I release this marker from this height, as it is at this point, it possesses potential energy. It has potential energy, okay? Due to its height above. Remember, potential energy is mgh. Now, when you release this mass and it falls on the spring, what is going to happen? It will bounce the spring. So it's going to cause, you know, the spring to a kind of exact a certain energy. Work will be done on the spring. And at the same time, the spring will do work on on the mass because the spring can bounce the mass upward. So for that reason, we can conclude that the potential energy is equal to the elastic potential energy. Permit me to use E subscript P as elastic potential energy. Now potential energy here is MGH and that is going to be equal to elastic potential energy from our previous class. We established it to be half K E squared if you know the first constant K. If we know the force instead of the force constant, that's to say maybe the examiner didn't give you the force constant, you're giving force. Then you would come to this and fix F instead of K. And in that case, this extension, which in this case is serving as compression, will not be squared. It will not be squared. It's, it will simply be half Fe. Okay? So you want to take note of this. Now the mass given to us is 50 kilograms. All you have to do is substitute. 50 times acceleration due to gravity is 10. Then the height from which the mass was released from is 10 meter. So this is going to be times 10. And then equal to 1 over 2. The first constant is given as 4.0, which is the same as 4 times 10 to the power of 4. And then that's going to be multiplied by the square of the compression, which we don't know. All right. So there's something I want to do here. We are looking for extension. You know, we are going to cross multiply. Let me bring these two here. It's going to be 2 times 50 times 10 times 10 equal to 4 times 10 to the power of 4 then square of the compression. If you've been following the GMATS 41's classes, in our maths class I explained that whenever you see you know, mathematical equations or expressions where you have multiplication and division, that is there is a possibility of dividing. It's advisable you divide before you multiply. So you can see that I refuse to multiply 50 by 10 by 10. I refuse to multiply them because if I do to give me a certain number that is big, that is big. Are you following right? So I don't want to do that. I'll simply make the compression square subject to the formula. That's square of the compression. And that's going to be 2 times 50 times 10 times 10. That is going to be divided by 4 times. Now look at this 10 raised to power 4. Permit me to write it as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's the meaning of 10 raised to the power of 4. Now we are looking at a situation whereby you don't have calculator to use in solving this guy. Which of course, you know, in jam, it's as good as no calculator. Yeah. I've always told 
you know, uh, students, that thing, that thing that is in the system, they say calculator, it's better I don't even use it. Yeah, that's the truth. Because you waste more time using that system's calculator to solve problems. Yeah, I, I tell you, <laughs> you waste time. My suggestion to the exam body actually, if they will, is to allow students to use calculator for this exam. That's the truth. However, even you yourself as student, please, being able to work out some of all these things, it's not too difficult. It's not difficult even. I've always suggested a good knowledge of multiplication may help you out. Once you are good in multiplication, you can handle, handle division easily. Anyway, that's my candid suggestion. From here, this 10 and this 10 we go off. This 10 and this 10 we go off. All right? Now look at something here. This 10 will cancel this 50 if I want. Or I can simply say 2 times 50 will give you 100. That 100 will now be cancelled by these two tens. Are you following right? That is, it will be divided by 10 times 10. You need that way the choice is yours, but you can still see it clearly. If 10 divides 50, you will get 5. Then 2 times 5 will give you 10. That 10 will now divide this. Are you following? So you are left with 1 over 4. So to get our extension, it's going to be equal to square root 1 over 4, which of course will give us 1 over 2. In conclusion, the compression is given as 0 0.5 meter. This is the compression that the spring will experience as a result of this mass falling on it. I hope you enjoyed this, right? Pretty cool. So it's not difficult. Once you follow up with our classes, see questions like this, you play with them, okay? Very simple to interpret and to solve. So, Alright, in our next video lesson, we are going to deal with four questions on part one of elasticity, which I taught you in previous class.